Another week with another remarkable slate of Starship updates at Starbase, Texas. SpaceX has been progressing towards Flight 4 in their typical non-stop fashion, with repairs to Stage 0, as well as the static fire of Booster 11 taking place. Now let's quit wasting time and dig right into the action. Friday's activities at Starbase began at the stroke of midnight as Ship 29 made its late night return to the build site after completing two static fire tests earlier in the week. Moving quickly on the self-propelled modular transporters, Ship 29 made the journey down Highway 4 in a relatively brisk 50 minutes. On arrival, the ship pulled into the site, stopping in front of High Bay in the ring yard. After a short wait, Ship 29 was moved into High Bay, entering the structure slowly, then being maneuvered into the front right corner of the bay. The final methane tank section for Booster 14 was brought over and staged outside Mega Bay 1 for stacking. The two-point ship lifter that has been used at the launch site was relocated to the build site in the morning and parked temporarily outside of the High Bay. Construction of the new office building continued, expanding the building's second floor structure while construction advanced on the building's fourth floor. After a short stay outside High Bay, the two-point ship lifter that was used at the launch site was relocated to Mega Bay 2 in preparation for the next ship lift. After removing and replacing the damaged methane hose, the previously removed liquid oxygen transfer hose was replaced in the booster quick disconnect on the orbital launch mount. Workers began repairing the damaged sections of the drawworks housing as well. Some smaller sections near the tower legs were torn loose during the third integrated flight test and needed to be replaced. On Saturday, with the repairs to the booster quick disconnect completed, its rear hood was relocated to the orbital launch mount. Repairs on the drawworks housing continued through the night and the work was nearly completed by morning. The booster quick disconnect rear hood was then lifted and reinstalled on the orbital launch mount. On Sunday, a counterweight tray designed for load testing bridge cranes was brought to the build site and taken into the right side of Mega Bay 2. Monday saw Booster 14's remaining methane tank section brought into Mega Bay 1 for stacking. The next step in the production will be joining the methane tank section to the liquid oxygen tank and common dome that sits between the two tanks. A convoy of water tankers began arriving on Tuesday, refilling the water tanks at the launch site as SpaceX gears up for Booster 11's test campaign ahead of Flight 4. Outside the D2 gate at the launch site, a skid loader began removing a section of concrete. Wednesday morning began with an early relocation of the booster transport stand from the storage yard to Mega Bay 1 as workers made ready to move Booster 11 to the launch site for static fire testing. Another beam with cross-bracing gusset plates went in at the new office building site, while the newest section of the building's structure received its first third floor beam. Over at the launch site, the chopsticks were brought to the booster lifting position, and the quick disconnect arm was swung out in preparation for Booster 11's arrival at the complex. Meanwhile, back at the build site, Booster 11 was lifted onto the transport stand in Mega Bay 1. After completing a few checkouts, Booster 11 was rolled out of the bay and the grid fins were reset to their neutral positions. Booster 11 and its transport backed out of the build site, made the tight turn onto Highway 4 and then headed forward to start its journey to the launch site. Over the next 70 minutes or so, Booster 11 traveled down the highway towards the launch complex. The booster was expected to be static fire tested and upon success, sent back to the build site to receive its hot staging ring and undergo final checkouts ahead of launch, which is expected to be no earlier than May. Once at the launch complex, Booster 11 was brought into the site and parked next to the orbital launch integration tower. Shortly after midnight, Booster 11 was moved between the tower's chopsticks and prepared for lift. The chopsticks were then closed and attached to Booster 11, moving carefully and in small increments towards the booster. Once the chopsticks were in position, the tower took up the weight of the booster, lifting it just a little bit off the transport stand. The lift then began in earnest about half an hour later, carrying the stage up, over and onto the orbital launch mount. The lift gave us our first good look at the booster engine section, which appears to be largely the same as Booster 10's. Less than an hour after Booster 11's placement on the launch mount, the chopsticks were disconnected and raised over the booster, rotated over and set down at the tower base. 
The quick disconnect arm was also returned to its normal position. Later on Thursday morning, a large heavy curved steel beam, believed to be part of the new Starship load testing infrastructure, was lifted into place at Massey's. Back at the launch site again, the quick disconnect hood on the orbital launch mount was open and the quick disconnect was attached to booster 11. To make room for moving ship 30 into Mega Bay 2, ship 29 was brought out of the high bay, revealing a surprising amount of missing tiles on the ship. The tiles were not lost during the static fire tests, but it seems SpaceX has opted to remove and replace several dozen across the vehicle. The ship's nose cone, which contains the propellant header tanks, is being completely retiled, with the new tiles held in place with adhesives as ceramic wool packed into every tile gap. Once Ship 29 was out of the way, Ship 30 was brought over to Mega Bay 2. The nearly complete heat shield on Ship 30 stands in sharp contrast with the patchwork of missing tiles on Ship 29. A few minutes later, Ship 30 was brought into the bay to wait for placement on one of the work stands. Ship 29 spent several hours outside before being rolled back into the high bay, where workers would resume their work to replace the ship tiles. The work platform under the orbital launch mount was lowered later in the afternoon as the booster proceeded towards static fire testing. The detonation suppression system used both to flush any combustible gas from under the launch mount and prevent a detonation propagating was given a test run of its own. Making use of the two-point lifter brought in earlier in the week, Starship 30 was lifted onto the middle work stand in Mega Bay 2 as powerful work lights put the different arrangements of the ship's heat shield tiles in sharp relief. Underneath Ship 30 in the center work stand, crews on scissor lifts set to work inside the Starship's engine bay to secure the ship in place. Each Raptor engine is started with an igniter and Booster 11s were easily heard across the launch site as the booster made its way through the pre-testing process flow with surprising speed. With the Starship now secured to the stand, the two-point lifter was then detached from Ship 30 and set down in its cradle. And to cap the week off here at Starbase, Booster 11 roared to life as its 33 Raptor engines ignited for an 8 second static fire, readying the vehicle for the upcoming Flight 4 launch. Saturday morning at Cape Canaveral, we saw SpaceX preparing for the Utilsat 36D mission, with the Falcon 9 rolling out of the pre-dawn hours to historic launch complex 39A for an afternoon launch. A few hours later, the Falcon 9 was raised vertical at the pad by the transporter erector. That afternoon, Falcon 9 Booster 1076 lifted off into the Florida skies, sending Utilsat 36D into a geosynchronous transfer orbit. Then, completing SpaceX's second launch of the day, this time from Space Launch Complex 40, Falcon 9 Booster 1067 lifted off four hours later, carrying 23 Starlink V2 mini satellites for the Group 6 45 mission into low Earth orbit. Falcon 9 Booster 1078 was then laid onto its horizontal transporter on Monday before heading back to Roberts Road for refurbishment ahead of its next flight. Doug then returned to port with both fairing halves from the Starlink G6-45 launch in the afternoon. Bob returned to port with the fairing halves from the Utilsat 36D launch a few hours later. Signet Warhorse 3 brought the short fall of Gravitas and Falcon 9 Booster 1067 back to port on Tuesday. Falcon 9 Booster 1067 was then lifted off the drone ship a few hours later and placed on the dockside stand for stowage after its 18th successful flight. A short time later, Crosby Courage returned to Port Canaveral would just read the instructions in Falcon 9 Booster 1076. To keep pace with SpaceX's aggressive launch schedule, Signet Warhorse 3 then towed a short fall of Gravitas right back out to sea to support the upcoming Starlink Group 6-47 mission. Doug then headed to sea the next day in support of that same mission. With Starbase's launch mount revealing the need for improved launch infrastructure, the last leg for the previous Starship launch mount at Launch Complex 39A was taken down. A new launch mount potentially incorporating a flame diverter or trench is expected to be built in its place. Thursday morning, Booster 1067 was lifted off the dockside stand and set horizontally onto a self-propelled modular transporter with a support cradle to make the journey back to Roberts Road. 
With the stand now clear, Booster 1076 was offloaded from Just Read the Instructions and set down on the dockside stand. And there you have it, another SpaceX and Starbase weekly update brought to you by Lab Padre. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button if you haven't already, and we'll see you next week. Thanks for watching, everyone. Lab Padre, out.